Enjoy our shows? Follow the Mercado Airways crew all over social media. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airways. On Instagram, Nicole is at Typing Wind Tipsy. Alex is at Mercado 2121. Mike is at Mike Mercado 2333. And our true crime show is at Murder Mysteries and More. And on Twitter, Nicole is at Typing Wind Tipsy. Alex is at Mercado 21 Alex. And Mike is at M Mercado 2333. You can follow the network at Mercado Airways. Follow our pop culture show on Twitter at Good Brothers Pod. Get us on the go by downloading our programs anywhere you get your favorite podcast, like iTunes, SoundCloud, Podbean, Stitcher, and other popular sites. Just search us at Mercado Airwaves. While you're at it, please like, rate, review, and share us with your friends. Visit us on YouTube.com slash Mike Mercado 2333. Click the subscribe and like button to get notified every time a new episode or interview is posted. Support Mercado Airwaves by visiting Patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves, the home of our interviews with athletes and celebrities, which you can get ad-free and early before it's released to the public. Come play video games with us on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network. Mercado Airwaves is powered by Munch Art Design. Like them on Facebook at Munch Art Design. Voice over work on Mercado Airwaves is performed by Josh Fox. And here we go. Get ready, get set for the best movie and pop culture talk in the universe. It's the Good Brothers on Mercado Airwaves with your hosts, Alex Mercado and Mike Mercado. Welcome back, everyone, to the Good Brothers. I'm Alex, making my triumphant return from Florida to save the show. Mike's also here, people. Say hi, Mike. Hi, you're very welcome for me beating Thanos. And I'm pretty sure no one listens to the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, I, I yeah. Anyway, Mike's nonsense of Endgame opinion probably that it's the best movie ever in MCU. That's not, a, that's it's not, not a, even better than Infinity said, War, but I whatever. I find it very offensive that you made that voice about me when I didn't have voices. That's pretty much how I hear you. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining us on this episode. The Good Brother is back, fortunate or unfortunate, depending on which team you are on. Uh, but, views say pretty high. But we have a very busy show. The Good Brother came back from Florida. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. We preview Detective Pikachu coming on theaters this week weekend we review game of thrones season eight episode four get the good brothers thoughts on it and we preview this week's episode spider-man has a brand new trailer we talk a little bit about a certain movie that hit netflix we have a little discussion about sonic trailer design i want to get the good brothers thoughts on that watchman drops a new trailer and anything else that pops into our mind in this episode of the good brothers but why don't we go ahead and start off with the most Pertinent news, good brother, and that is you are back from your summit in Florida. How did the kids do, and what's going to move on moving uh, we'll, forward? We'll be fast about it. It was good. It was good. Went well. It was raining all weekend. Yeah. Didn't really get to go to Disney. I was going to say, did you do any of the theme parks? Didn't get to do any theme parks. Going to go back in the summer for vacation. So how, what is the gap between the ki- the kids coming back from Florida this past uh, weekend? They had two weeks for trials. Really? Yes. Okay, so it's a two-week uh, trial period. Yeah. That, so you have to reestablish the team then? Basically. Oh, okay. That's, so it's kind of like Drumline, where every once in a while you got you have to challenge each other to... Uh, well, no. They got to retry out for a different team now. That's interesting. So it's a different it's like team. It's like, what happens when you finish the, the, the NFL season? Oh, so wait. You this still is, have to go through camp. So this stuff. is where I'm a little confused for all you sports The nerds. season has ended. So officially. the season's officially over. So, that, so what is the thing that they're going to do in two weeks? This, this, this That's team. a tryout. So, Mike, let's say you made the level four team. Sure. And you've improved your skills. You will now try out for a level five team. Sure. Let's say you've maintained the same. You will maintain that level four team. Let's say for some reason you were lazy and wanted to be a TO and just not do anything. Shout out to TO. You're going to level three then, sure. sort of thing. The hope that's the point is you might have the same team, might go to a right. higher team, might go to a lower team. No, totally. But you have to retry out. Like the season's over, you're done. So what I guess where I'm could what 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 confused me is isn't there a championship you guys still have to go for? That was the summit. That was what just happened. The I thought summit that was a is the championship. I got you. You okay. qualify throughout the year. That's what it was. And how did we do? Did we finish top five, top ten? We did top ten in like four categories. Good. All right. So we had a, we had a very good. Performance it was good. Yeah, it right, was cool. good. Perfect. That's what I want to know. Do so you now like a normal high school sports got season? You. Yeah. So now we're the okay. summit is the championship. All right. So now we're we're in off season. I got you. Okay. Okay, yes. perfect. Okay. Well, congratulations to you and the kiddos. Can't wait to see what they do this summer and then obviously uh, into next season. But, good brother, why don't we go into some other awesome Yeah, I, I, need, I need a break from coaching. I need, yeah. some, so I need some entertainment. And, you know, we'll go entertainment, but some coaching, too, because Detective Pikachu comes out this weekend. We no, got to catch him out. Going. 
<laughs> you gotta catch them all, and we gotta train them good, brother. And in this one, the universe is being built, obviously, with the voice of Ryan Reynolds as Pikachu. Justice Smith is the new main actor, uh, a lovable actor that we've seen him in Jurassic World uh, Part 2. So it's gonna be really cool to see this uh, this this kind of matchup happen. Currently, right now, it's at 70% on Rotten Tomatoes. So solid. So a very solid grade. For a specifically a video game inspired movie and an IP that nobody really knew how they were gonna do. I think at this point it's money. If mm. this movie makes money, there's a franchise there. If this movie does what Power Rangers did, Power Rangers are good reviews. It's just it needs to make the money, the nineties money, because if it doesn't, then there's no justice to have a franchise. Let me ask you this. Is this the movie? That takes number one spot from Avengers Endgame this weekend. That's tough. I think it's so. Tough. Yeah, no, it yeah. will. It's going to be close, I'm, right? I'm happy to see it tonight, honestly. Also, I'm seeing an opening night. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you how it is next week's episode. But, you know, the marketing's been great. Yes. It's all over the place. Ryan Oates is obviously a Pikachu's killer. Pikachu's yeah. Pikachu. Pokemon yeah. Go alone brought a lot of fans. The 90s, baby. Nintendo's popular game right now. Everyone knows stuff. Pikachu. Yeah, yeah. Like, this was the right character to go for. It was Pikachu with Ryan Reynolds' voice. So, I think they've done everything right. So if a movie like this can't make money, I think it establishes Pokemon can't make money. Yeah, that's that's a that's great what it comes like. There yeah. is nothing wrong with this movie. So if this movie cannot make money, it that's the reason that Pokemon yeah. just can't make money. Non live action. And I thought what was going to be a detriment to it was the title of Detective Pikachu because it wasn't just and that Pokemon. Turned out to be the biggest the probably a, the assist to it because now there will be a Pokemon World or a Pokemon whatever yeah. like coming down the the pipeline, especially if it makes this money. But I want to kind of circle this around one thing. And we mentioned in the top of the show what we're going to be running down today. Let's go ahead and bring in Sonic now up to it. So we're going to take it from the bottom of the show list. And we're going to bring him up to this conversation. This is the, the thought I've had and I want to run it by you. The only reason that Sonic is getting as much crap as it's getting. And the BS that the, that the studio is now redesigning it because of fan complaining. Is because how good the Pokemon look. How much TLC? This is just my theory. Now, ru- now run with me, and you could totally yeah. uh, this man. Yeah, my let's... theory is this. I'll allow it. Yeah, my theory is this: when a movie like Avengers comes out, and then a movie like the DCU stuff comes out, right? You compare the two because they're kind of in the same dra- genre, but you notice how maybe some have more TLC. It's the little intricacies. It's the little things they pay attention to. Watch this Pokemon trailer over the last few months, and then watch this Sonic trailer. They they don't look. Like, they were done by people who understood the Sonic team specifically. You have a character that, first of all, the design was always going to look bad. We could agree on that, right? Sonic's a hard character to translate. Go ahead. I, I, but yeah. my theory is the Pokemon don't necessarily look great. What they look like is as if people who love Pokemon did their best to make them great. come up. Did their best to make them look as great as they can. Some people think, like, Lickitung looks weird or that Psyduck look weird. I think they look great. But the point is, though, is nobody sits there and says they look ugly. They need to be redone. What are you doing? These are travesties. Sonic came out, and they did that. <laughs> My theory is because people don't feel the same love that the studio, that Paramount and these directors did in this movie. It looks like any uh, 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 the movie about the bunny. It looks like Hop. It looks Even like a movie like that. Got, Hop, the, Hop got good reviews. Hop got good reviews. It was meant for children. It was a brand new character. Right. Yeah. So my all in all, my theory is I don't. The movie may be great. My thing is I don't think a the studio should have redesigned Sonic. Your design is your design. That's my thing. Is it? It's as simple as that. I think had Sonic looked like Sonic. Yeah. The movie just looks weird, but people yeah. will give it a chance because he looks like Sonic. It's the and I don't, I think the voice is fine. Yeah. I think the humor they went for is fine. I think the action looks good. Cyclops being it is cool. Like, I I, I, I mean they said that from what I heard from the comic cons or the the fest was that the scenes looked cool, like very Quicksilverish. Sure, it's just he looks bad. What do you think? And about you know what? I don't. You're a studio. If you put something out bad, it is your job to go back and do it. Sure, if you feel as a studio. That, man, you know what? We really messed up. No, maybe this might be the case. This might be the case where they it just so happened that not only the fans and the studio both saw the same problem once it was in live action. But I think that no matter what, you're a studio. Like, Mike, we're a company that tries to please people. If we had said, hey, you know what? Alex is swearing too much. I would make that change even though I didn't see it. As a studio, it doesn't matter if you thought it was good or not. You heard the backlash. Your job is to go out and fix it. But when when do we stop in, in creative artistic liberty? 
Like, this is... The directors and the film designers thought this is how our Sonic needed to look. When money... When I, when art and money are equal. That's fine. I, you're, you're right about that. When, you, when the money determines it. But... What's next then? At what point are we going to do now what they... It, so, this is the case now. So... Let's say, let's turn back clock, and it's 2007, and we just found out Heath Ledger was cast as the Joker. And we did the exact same thing that they did now. We're like, we hate how he looks. We hate his design. You're talking about the pretty boy from Brokeback Mountain? Hell no. We want somebody else. And the studio then decided that they were going to recast, redesign, and redo their whole thing. Bad example, because by the time that trailer came out, people fell in love. No, that, no, they didn't. It doesn't yeah, matter. They did. It no, doesn't I'm matter. Nobody this. saw Sonic until the trailer. But, and that's what I'm saying. Like, they didn't change it just from the poster or the look. They changed it because it was terrible. It did look bad. I'm not disagreeing it's different. with you And Heath Ledger came out, and then his performance was just crazy and kooky and stupid. We would have been like, uh, okay, we complain. But he came out, and we're like, oh, this is but creepy. This is their, great. That is their direction. That is up to the studio. The studio decided. And the studio that's wants to make money. I, I, I get it. And they have all the right to, to, yeah. to change it. My point is, is it's a bad precedent to set now that in 2019, where the internet is all uh, bio garbage, because you could tell the difference between real commentary and jumping but on the this, bandwagon. But remember, it was every YouTube even the good ones, even ones until, that we respect, sure. even us right now tell, saying it looks dumb. Well, until, yeah, you say that, but you always make fun of me about not being in touch. I went on the very next day, the next 24 hours, went down the same down re, uh, YouTube hole, and literally about 70% of every single person that talked trash on it, the first day it tweeted out, came back after the par Paramount and the directors and all those people who are going to work countless hours to refix this bullshit, sat there and said, you know what, I might have overreacted. You know what, I pr we probably were a little too harsh on this sure. because the internet is too harsh and too compulsive and that's my point is at what point we're allowing this in a sonic movie in a stupid it's little a cgi sonic, character what is the but what you know how much how much time and money goes into that how many i, hours I think the it? fact that it's just such a little sonic movie is why this is not the biggest deal but it's a big ip in the sense of it is it, imagine it this was, was 20 Mario. years ago well maybe uh, granted, when's the last yeah. time a son okay so let's take the movies out of it when's the last time sonic tv show was successful Ten well, years I mean, ago, they just had that was, big platinum game in Sonic Mania, so it has had a platinum game. It has had a movie. I mean, that at game this that point, it's living off pure name. I don't think it's a big deal, especially when it's a CGI character. I mean, look back to the future. Did reshoots after their mom because they didn't like the kid. Reshoots are different than redesigning a but character a, after the movie. I think done. we're in a bad, we're in a bad metal that we can't agree with because this is a CGI character. We're talking. They're not replacing the voice. They're not changing any of the movie. They're literally saying we're taking this guy yeah. and we're going to just insert the way we think he should look now. Now, my, now this is all very different. This is all a caveat if the Good Brother is right and it is as easy as ultra, uh, control alt delete copy paste. Well, they haven't changed the release date. Well, what I'm saying, well that's what I'm saying though. If if it's that simple, fine. So you don't think it's that simple? I, I mean, I know, I know computer programming. I understand. But you, to a so small you're up, So what are you upset about? Like, I'm upset if about all things. they change is the visual of Sonic well, I, and everything else is the same, I'm, I'm are you still things. upset? No, no, no. What I'm okay, the ahead. underlying upsetness comes from I don't want fans to have as much power as we already have. But it's our thing. But We're paying great. for no, no, it. No, I get it. I get it. And that's that's controversial. And it might be go case by case. I might change my mind tomorrow. So I'm not gonna die on that okay, hill. As what, as, okay, as long as okay. I'm not okay, dying on hill. What I'm dying on the hill of is the creators and the workers that have already spent all that money. And what makes you think that these studios are going to pay them the same amount of money to quote-unquote fix a mistake? Like, that's my point is these same guys, this isn't James Cameron. These are little on the totem pole, quote-unquote, graphic designers, computer designers, Speaking directors, of that, James Cameron directors. did push his Avatar movies another few years. But he's got Disney money now. And Disney's relying yeah. on the fact that... And we'll talk a little bit about that in just I a mean, that bit. was basically the gist yeah. of it. But uh, we get the Star Wars <sighs> movies, so are going to take a three-year break and everything. But we'll kind of wrap this up. I want to wrap up the Sonic conversation and the Detective Pikachu conversation. I he, you know, I'll be honest. Jim Carrey. I thought, I thought the movie looked fine. Okay. I thought Sonic looked fine. I was cool with it. Cool. You and me were... I guarantee yeah. you were the same way. You are like, I'll it watch right. it. Yeah, it looks fine. If, right. it, if it's dumb, it's dumb, but I'll watch it. Jim Carrey went full Jim Carrey, so I'm not going I to... I appreciate Jim Carrey for the fact that he doesn't make a lot of movies. Yeah. So he must have liked the role enough, and I know he's been trying to get out of a lot of obnoxiously violent roles mm. and, I, and go more this direction because he thinks there is too much violence. Sure. I appreciate it. I, I was going to watch it. Yeah. It's Sonic. I was going to watch it regardless. So, I mean, I think all in all we agree. I mean, it, it's going to be an interesting conversation to see how it all pans out, but... Detective Pichu, Pikachu comes out this very weekend. Very excited to see that. And hopefully we get a brand new universe that has to deal with the Pokemon company. But Alex, we also have the chance 
to finally talk about what happened at the Battle of Winterfell and now what happened over at King's Landing and what's leading up to Episode 5. So, uh, let's go and start off with this one. What did you think? Because I haven't talked to you since Winterfell or Episode 5. Yeah. So, those two episodes combined, what did you like? What didn't you like? Were, first of all, let's start with this one, the big one. Did you have a problem with the lighting in Battle of Winterfell? Was it too dark for you? Yes. Okay. There were parts, okay. but... I can't complain. I liked it still. Okay. But it was very dark. Yeah, it was a dark episode. Although, once it went to Aria, it kind of all went away because it was And I also don't agree where the the producers were like, well, this is time to watch it. And it's like, no, your job's to put out simple, good things. Yeah, I agree. When it comes to the visual of it, I shouldn't have to adjust my television, but I'm not going to complain. Yeah, because, I mean, the episode had, again, it's one of those, those, those medias where... Everything that it hit on, it hit on. I thought it dragged yeah. for the first 25 minutes, and then it got really, really good. I think as soon as by the time it up, it, 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 that's it what I, yeah, by the just, time it got to the castle with Arya inside the castle, when it got a little more personal, yeah. I thought it was good. To me, though, up until this point, the best episode has been episode two. The, the episode right before Winterfell. Yeah, I think so, too. To me, so that's too. still been my favorite episode of the season. And you know what? Here's my problem with the season, and I've rewatched them all the coming up weeks and during. And I finally am all caught up. Like, I've rewatched season eight up till now. It's not my favorite. I think there is a lot of fan service, which I appreciate. I don't need an hour. I'd rather have done ten episodes of an hour, I guess, than six of an hour and a half. Sure. I feel like we've had legendary episodes. We've had two. Yeah, two and, two and three. Two and three. One was fine. What was what? I mean, when was the season fi- oh, opener? So yeah, I four was fine. Here's my issue: is that now we have episode five. Game of Thrones is known, and most shows the actually look the pattern. Mm-hmm. See, the episode before the season finale is the big this one. This is it. This is it. Right. This here. is it. That's yeah. the big one. Yeah. Like Breaking Bad. Everyone yeah. like you like Breaking Bad. The very last episode is him getting caught finally. Yeah. yeah. Um. You know, uh, The Wire is dumb right up to there. Yeah. Like we're getting the, like Soprano same thing it's, where yeah. the season finale necessarily is just more just ending. The fact he's, that it's a series finale, I hope it it goes a little longer. Yeah. I feel like we are going to get a lot of resolution in this first episode, in this next episode. Uh, I've heard that episode five is the longest of the series of the season. That's why I feel like it's going to be the one. I've heard though that episode six is only an hour, so it is the standard Game of Thrones yeah, hour. I think six is more cleanup. Because I'll be honest, I think five we find out all the questions. We find yeah. out who's yeah. going to rule. Yeah. Which I think Danny's dead. Okay. I, I think it's gonna be the, the Stark family finally. Uh, I think Jamie kills Cersei. Can we I, get into maybe that? maybe you know what? I could see all the Lannisters dying. I could see Tyrion, Tyrion even okay. being the one they say like the Lannisters need to die. So uh, now we're just kind of rambling about Game of Thrones. So why don't we why don't we uh, stay on target about certain things? The Jamie storyline with Brienne. Do you think? He really loved her. Did he just hit it and quit it? Or is he really in love with Cersei? Or is this just a red herring? I think go kill he her. loves her. He wants her to hate him. Okay. That's why he tells him all the bad things. Uh-huh. I think when it comes to Cersei, it's a red herring of like, oh, I need it. He's not doing it to go love her. I think he's doing it because he wants to be the one to end her. Interesting. I think it's one of those like, no, like I need to take her out because I'm the reason she's this. I need to be the one to do it. So we saw that. You know, Jamie went off to to do that. We know now that John has told Arya and uh, and, and Sansa, and Sansa, Sansa told, told Tyrion, people, who yeah. told Varys, who's now like everybody knows. You know how many people know eight people? Well, it's no longer a secret; it's information, yeah. which was one of the best lines in all of Game of Thrones. Yeah, love that line. Um, so why don't we go ahead and go to back to Cersei then? Because she kills. She has uh, Masandi killed. So yeah. Grey Worm is going to go. Masandi. Yeah, um, Masandi. Is it Masandi? Masandi, yeah. Okay. It's Melisandre and Masandi. Okay. Um, so she had uh, the Mountain Killer. I love the uh, the Carius, which you know tell, tells Danny to, to to burn everything down. Who does Cersei kill left? Who is left that Cersei has murdered directly? Not because of a war, not because of the battle, but who is somebody that by her hands or by her order up to the mountain something still is de- still has a death coming to them? Do you think? Or do you I think, think she was the last one? No, no, that. Okay, because I, I have a theory that it it might be Arya. I think she might capture Arya, and Arya's about to die, and that's when the Hound fights the Mountain finally, and we get that scene. I'm I'm debating. I think they I think they fight the Mountain together. See, here's where I'm I'm really struggling because we know in our theory Jamie's gonna go after Cersei. So is it Hound versus Mountain, 
or is it Jamie versus Mountain? Because that whole theory of her biggest yeah. monster finally going after the one. Because remember, Tyrion was going to pick Jamie. Yeah. Excuse me, Jamie was going to go fight the yeah. Mountain in Tyrion's name. So I think it, they they could have teased that as well as much as not as much as the, the Hound. But well, no, that. But when he leaves, he threatens him, and she almost makes the Mountain kill him. Remember sure, when he yeah. decides to ride north? Yeah. When he's like, I'm going to ride north, then he's like, you know, you won't do it. Mm. I, I could see this happening. I could see him going to a reason with her, the mountain killing Jamie. Wow. And then the Hound and Arya are going to take out the mountain. I think Sansa, Jon, or Daenerys will take, or Tyrion will take out Cersei. Okay. I think Jamie's going to go to take out Cersei, but he's going to get killed. I think there's supposed to be a battle between him and Eon or uh, Euron. Euron, yeah. whatever. All these island people yeah. have the weird. Iran. Yeah. They are Iran. For real. Iran. Uh, are you a little upset that they gave him the dragon kill? Because I feel no, it's very important. I thought, to I thought it was my favorite part. Okay. Because I was like, damn, they just said, like, hey. This is number two. Yeah. Middle fingers up. Well, I'm not, I don't care about the, the dragon. I don't guy. mind. I, care about I know a lot to. of people mind him. I think he's fine. He's I think okay. He's a total he's bad a, guy. He's a very good yeah. secondary bad guy before he faced. Like, he's a great, you know, uh, Bebop and Rocksteady before he fights Shredder, I think. He's a good Koopa Kids before you fight Bowser. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah I think yeah, he's yeah, just true. big, menacing, and evil. I don't need much character for him. I got two episodes left. Well, yeah, and we're, we're, we yeah, just started closing yeah. the story on yeah. my favorite character, like Tormund and Sam and the White and the Wolf. Gilly. I don't need. I hate Gilly. I don't yeah, so need do I. But, uh, yeah, anything more from him. Can we talk about the good boy, Ghost, for a second? I know a lot of people are upset. Mike, he's a wild animal. All he needed was a nod. I understand, but how great is he? And Ghost I, cool. yeah, Ghost I'm cool. gonna say this. This is controversial. You may hate me because you know you're a bad person. Ghost Direwolves greater than Targaryen dragons. That's just my opinion. I, I know Targaryen oh, dragons well, are dope. Well, give it away, Mike. The flag you have in your house. Oh, yeah, you're the such banner a poser. Dark. Yeah, my bad. We got it, Mike. You like you like you like Gryffindor, Mike. You like the main and characters. Not cool. just that, but no. one of the Starks killed the Night King. We haven't talked about that. Three years in the making. The creators knew about it. To me. It one of our biggest complaints was Arya is kind of cool, but they always just kind of pattern this weird storyline. Really, with, I thought Arya was great. I always liked Arya. I thought her storyline was really weird. I'm like, why is this little other girl, faceless girl, trying to kill her so much? Like, I know they're trying to tough her enough, but it doesn't seem like tough love. It just seems kind of like rewatch this season. You like it a lot better. I'm totally gonna rewatch the entire because I usually the same that I rewatched. Okay. I was like, wait, I like this actually. But, but dude, I mean, I had a legit reaction when she jumped up in the air. I'm like, no way. Then when he catches her, I'm like, no. And then Alex, you even mentioned, they're like, they throw a little crack in there. Like, it's very distinct. You're like, oh, man, did he just cut her, her. break her neck? But I, I'm going to admit, there's only X amount of things, and we've been very lucky in pop culture uh, kingdom the last few months to have a lot of moments in our favorite medias. But that moment of the dagger dropping, and then you, in your brain, in those three seconds, you figured it all out. You're like, she is going to do it. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And, and the minute it goes in, Ar I mean. And now that's why I'm saying, like, you got to think, Arya got her moment, so I don't necessarily think she's the one to kill anyone what do you think else about now. The pro prophecy, though. So Game of Thrones has done a great job of, of sticking to the prophecy. So uh, uh, Melisandre telling Melisandre. her, you're going uh, you're gonna to close many eyes, including a brown, a green, and a blue. I, that could be the mountain. Is the mountain the same eye color? He did. Okay, I, I don't know if it's true or not because he do a lot of face up close ups to him, yeah. so that might. But be now the case. he's all evil and stuff. Yeah, but... I think that's what it is. But I, I think her and Hound fight him together. I think he kills Hound, or like gets him really bad. He, in a perfect world, he almost kills the Hound. Arya kills the Mountain because that's like the last on our list besides Cersei. But Cersei's gonna be dead already, mm -hmm. or gonna be killed at the moment. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's gonna be one of those moments where he's like, "Are you gonna leave me?" sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But she's not gonna. Leave. She's gonna help him. And Hound's gonna kind of be her boy, like that's her homie. A good, that's a good place. Like that, you that. know what I mean? Like that's it's the whole joke. The whole joke back to like, yeah. "Well, I would leave you," and it's like, "Well, uh, maybe she won't." Because at the end of the day, maybe the Hound really is one of her only true friends. What do you think about the rumor? And we'll get into who sits on. The oh, there's a lot of rumors. But what do you think about Gentry? Sitting on the throne. He is a, a Baratheon. I don't think it's going to be him. I think, again, his story's done does now. Does he survive? I hope he survives. He's well, he's not going favorite. to. Well, he's, he's gone. Like, he's. We won't see him till episode six. Because he's staying at Winterfell, I'm assuming. He's staying at. He's when his kingdom, Stormbreak. Storm okay, yeah, Stormman. Okay, okay, okay. Like I said, there, the only, there's only a few going here where you're like, okay, they could still die. I think now we're down to the main character. Like, Bran's at Winterfell. Yeah. So, you know, we, we have him there. Sansa's does he get a PR? There. 
Didn't, or was that it? Was his didn't he already pay off? I mean, I guess. Didn't he pay I mean, off? That was my biggest debt. What, 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 what more is he going to do? Unless he takes over something. Unless he takes that's over That's what I'm saying, but, but that's not really a payoff. Like, yeah. what? Like, yeah, he's done his job. He yeah. he didn't do a good job of it. Yeah. My problem with the whole Aria thing is I love the Aria thing, and it was great at the moment. Then you look back, you're like, man, there's some useless-ass White Walkers walking around, ain't there? Oh, totally. Like, but, Homeboy's generals were completely useless. But, again... But the don't... scene was... You're like, I mean, you see the music, you're like, yeah. what's going to happen? What's going to Like, oh, my God, John's not making it, guys. John's got to fight a dragon. Have you seen the uh, the videos that they posted up on YouTube of... Uh, the reactions? Of, uh, of watch parties? Oh, no, it's it crazy. Great. Yeah. It's great. It, 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 a great moment in television, I think. Like, no, a it is. No, it is. Like I said, like, you yeah. can... It's so good, you're going to let go of anything. You're going to be like, yeah. that was fantastic. So, I mean, we could talk about it all day, and yeah, I mean, we, 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 we would. But let's go ahead and answer the question that we think... The hardest question in the world. It's going to happen. So before we get to that question, give me all the deaths that you have in episode five only. Not episode six, but episode five specifically. And then the million dollar question. Who sits in the Iron I'll Throne? skip the death one because I think that's the hardest one. I just we don't I don't want to get into it. I think the better question, who sits on the Iron Throne? Because we both think at the end of this episode, we won't know. I think it's going to be the Starks. I think they're going to abolish King's Landing. I think... Here's my guess. Danny's going to destroy King's Landing, and it's done. I agree. So at that point, the North is the North. Like That's I the agree. main thing. It's be I think it's going to be more of a democracy. Yep. I think they're going to have to kill Danny. I Whoa. think I think toward the end, John's going to have to kill Danny because she's becoming the Mad Queen. Oh, man. I think that's a red herring. I think that that's Or you think she's going to... I can see that, too. I, I have two guesses. Danny. That's yeah. my other. It's either going to be so hard in one direction or so hard the other. I don't think there's a middle where Danny's just on the throne. I think you're right. Either she goes mad queen or she turns around completely and says, we just, this place is done. So, no more Iron Throne. It's kind of of intertwined with you. I think we've been led to believe that Danny's going to burn it all down. That's all she wants. I think Cersei's going to burn it all down. I think Cersei's going to bend the very edge of the feet. I think our good guys are going to have a rough time. And at the very end, she's going to blow up King's Landing. So, you think I I could see John and Daenerys dying then? And then I think. It becomes a democracy. Sansa, I think Sansa's There's the, the more Iron Throne. After Sansa's that. the one I think is the most real pick for the Iron yeah. Throne. I don't think there is an Iron Throne anymore. I think there's going to be That's many Iron saying. Thrones. Yeah, I think it's just kingdoms, like kingdoms working together. Yep. And now you're setting up the right people to run each kingdom. Yeah, but I think, I think who's going to be the president then? Sansa. If you're gonna Sansa ask and me, Tyrion. If you're going to ask me, yeah, I think that's kind of as close as it gets is Tyrion and uh, Sansa because at the end, I mean, I don't think you can have a Targaryen that's not Jon Snow. And that's just me because I do think that a straight Targaryen is crazy. And they've established that in this world. That pure Targaryen is kind of nuts. But in my opinion, I think uh, it's all been a red herring. Our heroes are our heroes. And Cersei is the bad guy. And she's going to destroy it all. But that's just our thoughts of what was Episode 4, The Battle of Winterfell. And what is Episode 5 coming up. And, of course, we'll make the jokes. Alex, please don't leave a Starbucks cup. In episode uh, uh, five. They took that out by the time yeah. I watched it. Because I was in Florida, so by the time I watched it, I looked for it, it was already taken out. Alex, what do you, how do you feel about multiverses? Because Spider Man Far From Home has introduced. I, I don't know. I don't know, to Mike. Two multiverses uh, with Mysterio in the newest Far From Home trailer. Can I tell you a cool theory I've heard? No, I'm going to say okay, this yeah. right now. I talked so much shit about the DC multiverse because it's done terribly. I'm willing to give this a chance. Interesting. And that's for me. Yeah. And I, I, I hate, hate I DC Homecoming's movie. terrible. Yeah. DC, You're wrong. But. It's so it's really a bad movie. Uh the bad guy makes no sense in it. Whatever, whatever. This movie looks a little better. Obviously, Mysterio's bad. He's a bad guy. He's gonna be a bad Thank guy. You. Um I'll give it a chance. Cause Marvel difference is DC TV shows have kind of become CW television for women. Um Marvel hasn't done that, so why would I not believe in it? Because I went into Homecoming wanting to like it. And I love Tom Holland. Hate everything else about the movie that's not Tom Holland. So basically everything Sony did was terrible, I thought. And everything Marvel did was good. Um, I think the same is going to be of this movie. It looks the same. It's like everything has to do with Spider-Man and Shield's going to be fun. Everything to do with the kids looks dumb. Mary Jane's terrible. Like I, And I love Zendaya. No one loves Zendaya more than me. I think she's terrible. I think the other kids are stupid. I like Ned. I don't like any I like of them. Flesh. I don't I mean, like I don't any like of them. I, I want to tell you the rumor I heard that I thought was phenomenal. It's not going to happen. But one of uh, Robert Meyer Burnett, who's on the John Campia podcast, he also has his own network at the Burt Network. He mentioned that what if, obviously, the multiverse is fake and Mysterio is just doing everything. 
But what if we're really building the Sinister Six? And I what if, I thought that was the plan, yeah. We are. But let me finish the thought. What if it's not just Scorpion, Vulture, and now Mysterio? What if that's not Nick Fury? What if that's Chameleon? And it's Chameleon and Mysterio working together. And everything that we see going on is an illusion to Peter Parker. I saw that rumor. Did you read the article by the Robert Russo Meinberg, brothers? Robert Meinberg, I brought it up. I did not see it. I have not. And uh, for all you Avengers Endgame fans that have seen the movie, and obviously almost everybody has because it's going to catch Avatar, the Russo brothers right now, you can catch it on YouTube, and Sirius XM had a full 23-minute conversation about the spoilers and their thoughts of Avengers Endgame. So uh, check that out. We're going to say this right now, people. We're not doing spoiler warnings anymore. No, we you need you need yeah. to see the movie. If, if it's, it's in the title. That's it. Like, like, at at, at this point, if you haven't seen the movie, I just don't. I don't get what you're doing. I mean, people work. People will have lives. It's two it's weeks, hard. Mike. I mean, people. Gotta if get the kids. Russo brothers, gods among us, the Russos, all hell the Russos, have told everyone, "Hey, it's out now, there. You can't get mad." Now, why did they do that though? To Spider Man trailer. trailer, the Spider Man trailer. And I agree with you. I'm not disagreeing with you, but I'm also fair. Like, I got best friends that have kids that it's hard for them. Like, it's legit. I'll hard send for you them. a link, y'all. I'm lying. I got yeah, you. Yeah, don't say that. Disney, do not listen to them, please, please. We have uh, no. Mike, links. if they're listening to us, this is a trap. Yes. they're gonna start listening to us. Uh, so, what do you think, though? So, you're interested in the multiverse. You think Mysterio is a bad guy? There I guess, are rumors to saying that he's actually a good guy. I've heard Chameleon. I've heard all that. You know me, I didn't like Vulture. I didn't like Scorpion. I think it's fine. I- I'd rather see Miles Morales come out of this eventually. I don't think the multiverse is real. I think it's real. I don't think it's real. I think at this, I think that's what they're aiming for. Unless that I'm, is the next This thing. movie's fascinating in the sense that I want to know where we're going. Because this is, like I said, it's the epilogue to Endgame. This yeah. is like, well, when this movie ends, kind of starts our new generation. Sure. And Spider Man's going to be leading these Avengers. So, what do we do necessarily with this? Are we going to introduce a multiverse? We already introduced space, and we're kind of doing our space thing. I, I don't see why you don't introduce a multiverse. You don't really have to touch it either. You can save it for the end of the phase. Interesting. If, if all you get is the X Men and Fantastic Four through the multiverse, that's going to be kind of fun. But we what we do know it's going to take about like because you five know what years you need the multiverse because they already want they got to keep that poor. Sure. So you need the, you need the multiverse, kind of. No, yeah, I mean there is that because they're like we want to keep Ryan Reynolds. I'm like, well, then you're gonna need the multiverse because everyone else is gonna have to be recast. I just I don't I maybe it's, I can't see it now because it is the beginning of a new phase, so I have to kind of just see a little bit of what they want to do. Yeah. But I mean, obviously, a multiverse is happening in many different uh, you know realms of storytelling. Do you think they'll do it well, or do you think they'll DC it up? Uh, I think they'll do it well, and then it's just all about what storylines they want to put. Like, how do you do? What is the plan of it? If to me, because we, we, what we do know is Doctor Strange 2, the new Spider-Man, Black the new Panther Black Panther, 2, the new Captain, Captain Marvel, Marvel 2. and the Guardians. Those are the, those five are, are existing. Yeah. Even Black Widow. So you got six movies for sure you know. I thought Black Widow was going to Disney+. Plus. I've heard it's a, a feature-length film and that it's going to be based on the – it's a prequel. So I've heard I've heard that yeah. Star is going to the movie theater. That's just what I heard. I, I mean, it could be – for all we know, it could go with the Falcon and Captain uh, uh, Civil uh, – And the uh, Scarlet uh, Witch and Vision. Yeah, all that. It could yeah. do all that. But I think ScoJo is a little more famous, so she might get a the uh, I just thought I heard that, but I can say you could be right. But but with all that you know, in mind, I they could do it, or they could use it as a one-movie plot device and close it up. And maybe everything that comes from the multiverse happens in that movie, and then they move forward from. It, so they, cl- the multiverse I'm happens. I'm interested. And everything I'm interested. Up. Nonetheless, I think it's fascinating. Yeah. And I, I, I'd be kind of mad if they didn't say, "Oh, the multiverse is fake." But then it'll be those tours where it's like, "It's fake," or is yeah, it? Right. I, I get or it, but, we're gonna bring it back in five years, and I'll be like, "Oh, I'm fine with it." But then. I'm interested in it because it does seem like a very. It seems like a very good way to go. After Endgame, but that wasn't the only trailer that we got, Alex. And really fast, HBO is trying to find the new footing that it has post Game of Thrones in just a few weeks. Talk about things like Barry, uh, Late Night Tonight, all these other shows. Uh, v, they have a lot of great shows. Those are already known. Like they're they're yeah. adding a lot of new shows. This new show that we just saw a trailer for is Alex talking about the DCU. Watchmen comes out, and honestly, it looked pretty freaking interesting. It looked good. Obviously, but it looked interesting. It didn't look, I like Zack Snyder. That's my guy. But Zack Snyder's Watchmen looked like a Zack Snyder Watchmen movie. 
this looks like something that, oh, I've never seen something like this before. Like, you have the cultish thing with Rorschach. You obviously have, like, a Regina King in a badass-looking uh, uh, uniform with the, with the badge on. So it's like, are the uh, Jeremy Irons looks like Dr. Manhattan. So, like, there's a lot of cool stuff in this trailer. Yeah, I thought it was great, and I think HBO's can't miss because, you know, I have their lineup pull that I just saw Chernobyl last night. Which was the it's a five part mini series about the nuclear meltdown. Yes, oh my god! And the first that. episode was fantastic. So you seen the first episode? I saw the first episode that came oh, out. How was it? Uh, it was fantastic. Okay, cool. And then obviously you have your Veeps, your Berries, your Gentleman Jacks, your Late Nights, your Vices, like it, John it, Oliver, phenomenal by the like, way. Like yeah, no, Oliver. Westworld's coming back next yeah. year and. Yeah. You know, HBO is definitely doing a good job, I think, finding its footing. But needing a new Game of Thrones. that And obviously, you, it's going to take a few years to get to that because every few years I think they we get forget to it, Game of Thrones was gone for like two years. Oh, no, no, totally. And they did just fine. Westworld was trying to be their answer towards it. Now, it was Westworld a bit breaking television? No. No. Was True Detective Season 3 breaking television? No. True Detective 1 helped a little bit. Yeah. Helped that network. I, I still personally think 3 was better than 1, but... Yeah, we can fight about that. Um... Later. I, I think they're in a good step. I think they're doing fine, you know? How big does Watchmen get? I don't think as big as you think it's going to get. I don't think as big as I want it to get. I think it's going to be good. Yeah. But I think the problem with these kind of properties is as soon as they change something, people don't like it. Oh, bro, yeah. No, that's very true. And the fact, I will say, though, it does. they do get a benefit of doubt of being on HBO. So yeah. that is one thing that people do have a very high opinion on HBO, so don't give them that little uh, yeah. that little leeway of it. But, well, we'll keep our eyes on it, and obviously we're super excited. Anytime we get more properties, especially on HBO, we're all down for that. But, Alex, we also want to hit on one thing. Everybody was talking about it. A lot of people liked it, and I noticed it's the same type of person that liked this movie on Netflix. And my question to you is, extremely wicked, shockingly evil, and vile, Ted Bundy movie. Did it hurt your opinion on it moving to Netflix? Did you have more incentive to want to watch it? Did you feel like it was going to hit the same way when you first heard of Zac Efron playing Ted Bundy in a movie? Did did it was any of that ever grain in a uh, grainy after you found out that it got dropped to Netflix? No, because I think that's where it should have been. And again, I say this all the time: Netflix hasn't put out a bad movie that I've watched this year. But there are always movies I watch out and be like, "Man, I'm glad I saw that." And Netflix didn't pay for it. I thought the movie was good. I thought, here's the problem, is I always, and you've kind of shown me this, I always assume people know what they're getting into because we know what we're getting into because we do the research exactly. beforehand. But then I, and I kind of take it as the other side. It's like, well, let's say someone didn't know. And it's almost like my friend Dahmer, which got decent reviews, like a nice 50, 60%. You're like, that's a decent movie. Especially a Netflix movie. Or like that, yes. Especially a Netflix Everybody. movie where you're like, that's like, an, that's like a B+. Plus. Here's a little insight, guys. Not every movie is a 90 and 200 million Like, movie. I mean, that exactly. Like, like, so it, you're like, yeah. uh, anything above a 50 to 60, you're like, that's decent enough to watch right. if it's not too long and if it's something you care about. It's like my friend Dom, right? I think people are expecting murder, murder, murder. You get like two murders only. Yeah. And it's, it's not even, and I'll be honest, even I was swerved a little, it's not really even a love story necessarily as much as just... Ted Bundy character piece played by Zac Efron, which I think Zac Efron does a fantastic job. That's the one. That's one of the positives out of this movie. Zac Efron definitely added another notch to the belt. You're like, and right, I think cool. in this kind of movie where all you need him to do is be charming, it works perfect. Sure. No, and and I think what's more important is all the information we need to know about Ted Bundy is out. So for all you True Crime fans who want to just watch Blood and Gore, look it. You have media's for that. You have outlets for that. Well, it was Ted Bundy tapes. They'll have show the pictures, yeah. like. This movie was a movie. It just so happened to be directed by a guy that we all have seen do very graphic material before. And on top of it, it's a, 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 a real person that we know has done evil things. But kind of the, the thing about this movie when you watch through it is you put you, it's theater of the mind too because you know what he did. So when you get to a certain scenario, you meet a certain person that was real, you're like, I know what he did to her. And the problem is he made this movie for two reasons. Right? He did a great interview on Collider Live where he talks about the reason he did this is one – uh, the woman, the Evangeline Lilly's character, she's a victim. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah. she's a victim. Yeah. Like, we yeah. need to establish she's a victim. Interesting for him and today. two, especially for him, he's the Paradise Lost yeah. guy. Like, yeah. he's done a lot of these mm -hmm. true crime. The other one is like, he's like, I want the audience to feel like they're being taken advantage of. Sure. I want the audience to feel what these people felt. It's like, am I rooting for the Zac Efron character? Oh, wait, he's a monster. Yeah. And you don't really see that toward the end of the movie where you start seeing this real monster. Like, you are you you buy into it a little bit, even though you know. But it's Zac Efron. You're like, oh, Zac Efron's a fun guy. Oh, wait, no, he's playing Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy's a monster. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, he murdered, like, 
50 people violently. Like, the whole title, which is, you know, a mouthful, was what the judge had said to him. Right. And John McAvoy does a great job. John Malkovich is yeah, Malkovich does yeah. a great job. Yeah. But he's also Put the, the judge. Put the bunny down. Says, yeah, he's the judge, though, that tells him uh, that he shame. likes him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That and, but that's were, what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, yeah. you buy into it. And I think that I like the move for that point. It's like, you're getting taken advantage of as an audience. Yeah. You're like, I want to take advantage of you. You're going to fall in love with Ted Bundy. And guess what? I know you don't want to, but neither did anyone else. But right. they did. America did fall in love with Ted Bundy. I still so is. it's like you have to establish that you. It's worth. It was worth making a movie to just be like, this is how obnoxious it was, guys. Where this man was a compulsive liar monster who was evil, Pure and evil. people yeah. still bought into it. So I suggest for all you true crime fans, check out our show, Murder Mysteries and More, first, and also. Check it out. I mean, if, if you're a true crime junkie, why not? It's something else to add to the repertoire and enjoy it. But uh, Good Brother, it was a fun show today. We got one more thing we want to get into that's very important. But before we get to that, is there anything else uh, outside that uh, has happened in the last few weeks that you want to hit on before we get into our... our, uh, um, uh, our... You know, Endgame pretty much took up a lot. Now we're going to start getting into more movies with Pikachu, Aladdin. You know, we have all... Uh, Disney's just going to keep hitting... No, I know Hellboy went, came and went. Poor Hellboy. So next week, I'm going to have it printed out, and we'll have more time to really discuss it because we'll, over the next few days, we'll definitely get even more uh, uh, dates and announcements. But Disney has released its schedule for the next, I think, four or five years. Yeah. And we have seen where Avatar has been moved a year. Star Wars will be taking a yeah, three-year no break. Avatar. Yeah, but it's interesting that during Star Wars one Christmas, Avatar the next, Star Wars the next, and Avatar after that. So they're, they're alternating each I, year. For yeah, them. of course. And they have these big old lands yeah. ported to them. So Disney knows they're going to make money regardless. So we'll post it somewhere on social media because we have the actual press releases. So we'll put them out there and you guys can check them out yourself to kind of guess where everything is going. But the good brother and I, uh, we're going to be watching Detective Pikachu at different times for another one of these rare movies where we won't be watching it screening together. So we'll be screening at different times. But we'll have a full review on the next episode of The Good Brothers. And we'll talk about a bunch of different stuff and maybe some Avengers Endgame news or whatever Spider-Man stuff. And obviously everything else in between. And obviously Alex and I will go at absolutely ham on game of thrones episode five the penultimate episode we finally have the battle of king's landing so we cannot wait for that but good brother we have one last thing i want to hit on over the last few weeks when uh, we've been a little bit busy you know you've had a lot to do we've had a lot to do we lost peter mayhew chewbacca chewy chewy is now gone home and you know he's with uh carrie fisher and r2 and everybody's you know up there together and I think I really want to just hit on how important Peter Peter Mayhew was to fans. I got to meet him at all the conventions and stuff. But how important a furball was to pop culture and, and, and society. And, yeah, we know Chewie's going to live on because it's a mess. But the problem is, it's like just like some of these other characters, he kind of made it popular where it's like it is important who wears these costumes. How he walks. Like these are walks. actors. Yeah. Like these still are actors. And regardless if his face is covered and he's not talking and he's doing the voice, it's important. Yeah. Like, it was important with Freddie. We found out with, with you know, uh, Robert England yes. and, yeah. and Jason and James all, and Hater, Michael. But, it's like all yeah. these characters, like, he kind of was a trendsetter of, like, no, it is important who we put behind this suit. It is important. Yeah. Like, these movements are important. And it's amazing what you would notice when you see, like, hardcore fans can notice if that wasn't the real Chewy, Right. You know, you're going to be able to see it. Like, it's just very noticeable. Because now we're all doing imitations of Peter Mayhew doing Chewbacca. Yeah. That's what it is. And, it's and you know, it what's what's wonderful about... He was the best part of Solo, let's be honest. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. But what's wonderful about... And I like the new kid that they have that, that's his that's his double. That, that That's the yeah. new Chewbacca, essentially. But um, what I, what I found wonderful in the last few... Like, let's say the last five years... Is the world is so dark sometimes, and it's so you know unhappy, and everybody's fighting with each other, that when something like this happens, it does seem to bring people back together. Death does that a lot because we do have intimate deaths that are close in our family that hurts, and that it's nobody they don't get the same type of, of of tribute. But when we do lose somebody like Carrie Fisher or Peter Mayhew or whoever, it does bring people together, and it does make you appreciate it and realize that it what. When you were sitting at home and you were watching a movie and it hit you in the feels, that you weren't the only person that it hit the feels in, that it was worldwide. And that's why it's important. That's why we do this show, because it does matter. Because in November of 2020, when people are doing elections, their brains are going to be on totally different things. They're going to be at, at DEF CON 9. When people are trying to pay their mortgage, people paying college tuition, that's why this stuff's important. That's why it's important to, to memorize 
and, and, and memorialize somebody like Peter Mayhew because they gave us a distraction. That's why it's important for you and I when we always bring a good show. We argue so much during pre-production because we want to bring the best show possible because we're a distraction. And somebody like Peter Mayhew deserves to be able to be remembered in that sense. Well, luckily we live in a social media world that he is getting yes. the attention and love. Mm -hmm. And I think that helps a lot of these people. Because back in the day, you're not making the headline unless you're Nobody a big actor. Nobody goes to conventions. Yeah, like, so that's what I'm saying. So like, now you can uh, now you can live on through the internet. And they know. So this is one of the positives of the internet where you're like, no, he'll live on now because of that thing we hate. I always go back to one of the inspirations of the show, John Schnepp, King Shweddy. He left us way too early, but... He left us knowing how appreciated he was, knowing how much his work was appreciated, knowing how much the world he loved was appreciated. I mean, Collider Live is one of the biggest podcasts there is right now, yep. and his picture's there, and same with John Campia. Yep. Like, he's well represented. You have to be. Across the media. You have to be. And we do our best here on The Good Brothers to make sure here in the Midwest that aren't in the West Coast or over at NYC that you have conversation and listen to two good brothers talk about the stuff that you and the family are talking about whenever you turn on the television or go to the movie theaters himself. But Good Brother, that is it. Peter Mayhew, may the force be with you forever. And Good Brother, may the force be with you as well. We miss May the Force together, so hopefully you had a good one. I know you did because the girls and all the kids down in summer were dominating, so it was a good time for the yeah. team over there. So Good Brother, that's it for us, you ready for the Battle of Kings Landing? I guess. You know I me. Mean? I, I just want it to be good. But I'm anticipating it, not living up to it. It's going to be in the daytime, so we know we'll get to see it. At, at least, least we'll get to see it. But I just, I'm lowering my expectations. Which means you're going to love it. Which means I'll probably lowered, love you, it. You yeah. lowered the expectations. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you on the very next episode of The Good Brother. For The Good Brother himself, Alex Mercado. Mercados. I'm The Good Brother, Mike Mercado. The North remembers, and we will see you post Battle of Kings Landing. Love you guys. Thanks for joining us here on The Good Brothers, here on Mercado Airwaves. Enjoy our shows? Follow the Mercado Airwaves crew all over social media. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. On Instagram, Nicole is at Typing Wind Tipsy. Alex is at Mercado 2121. Mike is at Mike Mercado 2333. And our true crime show is at Murder Mysteries and more. And on Twitter, Nicole is at Typing Wind Tipsy. Alex is at Mercado 21 Alex. And Mike is at M Mercado 2333. You can follow the network at Mercado Airwaves. Follow our pop culture show on Twitter at Good Brothers Pod. Get us on the go by downloading our programs anywhere you get your favorite podcasts, like iTunes, SoundCloud, Podbean, Stitcher, and other popular sites. Just search us at Mercado Airwaves. While you're at it, please like, rate, review, and share us with your friends. Visit us on YouTube.com slash Mike Mercado 2333. Click the subscribe and like button to get notified every time a new episode or interview is posted. Support Mercado Airwaves by visiting Patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves, the home of our interviews with athletes and celebrities, which you can get ad-free and early before it's released to the public. Come play video games with us on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network. Mercado Airwaves is powered by Munch Art Design. Like them on Facebook at Munch Art Design. Voiceover work on Mercado Airwaves is performed by Josh Fox. Enjoy our shows? Follow the Mercado Airways crew all over social media. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airways. On Instagram, Nicole is at Typing Wind Tipsy. Alex is at Mercado 2121. Mike is at Mike Mercado 2333. And our true crime show is at Murder Mysteries and more. And on Twitter, Nicole is at Typing Wind Tipsy. Alex is at Mercado 21 Alex. And Mike is at M Mercado 2333. You can follow the network at Mercado Airways. Follow our pop culture show on Twitter at Good Brothers Pod. Get us on the go by downloading our programs anywhere you get your favorite podcast, like iTunes, SoundCloud, Podbean, Stitcher, and other popular sites. Just search us at Mercado Airwaves.
While you're at it, please like, rate, review, and share us with your friends. Visit us on youtube.com slash bitemercado2333. Click the subscribe and like button to get notified every time a new episode or interview is posted. Support Mercado Airways by visiting patreon.com slash Mercado Airways, the home of our interviews with athletes and celebrities, which you can get ad-free and early before it's released to the public. Come play video games with us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mercado Airways Network. Mercado Airways is powered by Munch Art Design. Like them on Facebook at Munch Art Design. Voice over work on Mercado Airwaves is performed by Josh Fox. What's up, friends? Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. If you missed any one of our past interviews with amazing guests like future Hall of Famer and pound for pound best fighter in the world, UFC flightweight champion Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson, it's another day at the opera, I get to go out there and uh, test my skill. To award-winning producer, director, and actor Orlando Jones. Orlando, how you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm good, brother. How you doing? And all the other interesting guests we've had on. Joining us today is director and writer David Ferrier. Thanks so much, brother. I appreciate you having me on the show. MMA legend Chael Sonnen joins us today. Keep listening to your show. This is great. Thanks, my friend. Just subscribe to us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. And while you're there, please like, review, and rate us, friends. It helps so much. We also have a Patreon for anyone who would like to support the show. Just visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves and see how you can get all of our interviews ad-free and before anyone else and how you can get your business or company spotlighted on the show. Follow us on Twitter at mmercado2333. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash mikemercado2333. And if you would like to see what we're up to behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram, mikemercado2333. Thanks for listening and all the support. 